came out, got there well ahead of Paddy McGrath. Aidan O'Shea now. Oof. Thompson bounced off him, wasn't physically strong enough to shoulder with O'Shea. And the referee has blown his whistle, it's got to be a free in for Mayo. Killian O'Connor looks like he's going to take the responsibility this time. A couple of angry gestures in there. Aidan O'Shea and uh, Neil McGee, well that was the shoulder bang down when Thompson flat of his back almost. He's a big, big man, Aidan O'Shea. I know the uh, Australian rules clubs are very interested in attracting him over there, but thankfully he stayed with Gaelic Games. He's a student, of course, and he's a, a very, very bright future, I think. Yeah. Ender Barley is going to take it, Martin. Yeah, he's taking it again. Difficult angle, acute angle. Well, he is the uh, specialist kicker from that right-hand side with the left boot. This is his third attempt at getting a point from a free. One point from play during the first half. So now we're in the 15th minute of the second half. This needs to go over, and this one, I think, has gone over. Great score. Great score, great character, great nerve, because just at, you know, a couple of moments ago, that uh, miss by him could have affected him. Took that very well. Alan Freeman's coming on and going off Jason Doherty. Yeah, I thought Jason Doherty worked very hard in the first half, maybe didn't get on the ball an awful lot, was involved in that comeback, certainly, with some of the passes he gave, but Freeman has an immense amount of ability if he can put it to use during the period that he's going to be on. And he's gone into the inside forward line there alongside Conroy and O'Connor, but they need to get the ball into them, they need to use the breeze, they need to be creative, they need to be adventurous, Mayo. They've got to put the pressure on the Donegal backs. O'Connor kicking it in, in as far as Michael Conroy. Three against him, tries to go by the first man, that's Neil McGee, gets it back towards Varley. Immediately surrounded, and the referee gets the whistle to his lips, free in from 13 metres. Donegal fans near us don't agree, they're up on their feet protesting, but it's got to be a free. Yeah, when you think about the Donegal defence, it has been noted for his concentration and discipline. They're giving away some soft enough ones here, like in the two games against Kerry and Cork. Cumulatively, they only conceded four frees that were in shooting distance. Already this game, they have conceded a lot more than that. And even oh, even Barney felt that, and now he's getting treated for cramp. Yes, and this is Killian O'Connor range. OK, it's at an acute enough angle, but big, big kick. Well, that is the angle confronting him there, playing in towards Hill 16. It used to be called the railway goal in the old days, when they used to refer to the goals and talking on radio about uh, the goals of Croke Park as being the railway goal and the canal end goal. Killian O'Connor kicking, and he has managed to squeeze it in brilliantly! A fifth point from a free for the Ballon Tubber player, only 20 years of age, a student teacher at St Pat's. Here it is again from a very, very sharp angle, and he's made it 2-7 to 10 points, three between them, Donegal still lead. Yeah, he's a great head for a, such a young lad. He is so composed and such great temperament for this game. Great score. Well, that's uh, three points now in this second half, scored by Mayo. Leo McLoon, surrounded immediately by Mayo players, they're looking for a Donegal response now. Cavalier looks up, hits it forward, towards Colbert Fadden, closed down brilliantly here. Kevin Kane lost it, McFadden has it, Donegal come again, Murphy trying to curl it in here, it's an ambitious kick, there was nobody inside there to challenge David Clark, and Mayo are able to counter-attack. And it's big Barry Moore and six foot five inches tall, booting it down here towards Killian O'Connor. Couldn't take it. Anthony Thompson is back there, does well, slips it inside here. It's McHugh who carries it in. Slips the hand pass into Michael Murphy, operating around midfield. On it goes through Mac McElhenney. Eventually it's McHugh, all the Max. And finally Rory Kavanagh takes over. Back once again towards Carol Lacey. Trying to go through two players, trying to go around them. Lee Keegan stopped him. In then came Kevin McLaughlin, and McLaughlin head down. Intense.
again, full of business, out here as far as Colin Boyle, bounced off one of the Donegal players, David Walsh, comes towards Thompson, the half-back, swung forward once again to McElhenney, Donegal looking for scores now to steady things down and reassure themselves once again, they've never been behind in this match, Frank McGlynn, got a great point earlier on from up around that angle, comes back here towards Rory Kavanagh, Oh, he knew what he was trying to do, slip it into Thompson, who'd made a very advanced run, but instead Higgins, now Dylan and Mayo go back into the attack again. Brilliantly taken once more here by Neil McGee. The fullback came out, committed himself, won it. Free kick quickly taken. In as far as David Walsh. Slipped the hand pass forward, back from Leo McClune. And there on his hands and knees eventually is Michael Murphy. And the referee goes straight to the uh, Mayo player but signals that it's going to be a free in and this is the reason why Barry Moore and they're colliding with uh, Michael Murphy and challenging him rather vigorously yes and I think he felt that he felt that he's had trouble with injuries in the past and he certainly felt that felt but the ebb and flow of the game the last couple of minutes has been magnificent both teams going at it hell for leather there's a great sense of adventure from both teams, a great sense of, you know, the possibilities are there for either team to go and win it. A bit of more composure on either side, you know, who can be the most composed, the most calm, and whose decision-making is best between now and the final whistle will ultimately decide who wins. Well, he's back on his feet once again, Barry Moran, but there is always a concern about him. Referee having a word with him there about the tackle, making sure that uh, he doesn't get into disciplinary difficulties. James Nallan out there as well. Yes, if you just go back to the source of that for a moment, like Colm O'Boyle had a ball coming up here underneath us, neath us rather, talking about decision making, he just panicked with the ball a little bit. He had two men in the overlap, and from the turnover, the ball has ended up now where it is with Murphy having a chance of another free. From just inside the 45 metre line, he's got a goal and a point so far. His goal, the first uh, score after three minutes. A little under that, in fact, but. Uh, Report that has been in the third minute. This one high up into the air and between the posts and over the bar. Another one for the wonderful Glenn Swilly man, the captain of this team, hoping to do what they did 20 years ago and bring Sam Maguire back to Tyrconnell. Well, there's still plenty of time. Another 15 minutes still to be played in this final, but it's advantage Danny Gall as Jer Cafferty kicks it down. And back once again comes David Walsh. The substitute across here to another sub, Martin McElhenney. Both of them making their contribution. Paddy McGrath inevitably wanting to go forward. Rory Cavanagh has been busy, influential, involved time and again. Dishing it off to McClure. Hand passed into space here. Coming onto it is David Walsh who started that attack. McHugh was hoping to finish it. Instead, it's taken by David Walsh. And David Walsh has put it wide. There were some of the Donegal followers behind the goal away to the right at the Davin end who felt it was over. It wasn't. It stays at 2 8 to 10 points. In points, that's 14 points to 10. And there's another sub. Christy Toy is coming on. Yeah, he's coming off for Leo McLoon, I think it is, Ger. Uh, Leo has gone through his, you know, his normal <laughs> kind of shift of work, but by God, he has earned his rest at this stage. And the uh, subs that they've brought on have all come on for forward players. They've come on for Ryan Bradley, Paddy McBrearty, and as you say now, Leo McClune. So they freshen things up, keep the Mayo backs on their toes, and now it's up to Mayo to get something from this next attack. Alan Dillon, Lee Keegan, trying to force his way through. Good combined work by Donny Gold, stealing the ball back. They work as a team, they work as a unit, and this has been the pattern of play instilled in the by Tim McGuinness over the last two years. Christy Toy kicks it very, very long, it's ambitiously there, and McFadden made it happen, he's won it from Keane, it's two players against him, Danny goes, and the referee's blown his whistle, it's going to be a free in. That was almost a hopeless ball, you thought, from uh, Christy Toy, but somehow Colin McFadden made something of it, and from this, there's an opportunity for Danny Gall to go five points up. Well, uh, Colin McFadden made the most of it, but just before that, I thought that Kevin Kane was somewhat hesitant in going for the ball. It was his ball, had he attacked it a little bit more decisively. McFadden made the most of that indecision, and, shall we say, manufactured the free for himself. Well, he's manufactured it, but it's uh, going to be an opportunity for Dunny for, uh, Gold to get another one. 
as we see uh, Jason Gibbons being prepared. He's a midfielder, of course, and he's going to come on, I understand, for Michael Conroy. Yes, and just going back to it again, the source of all of that, I said, sourced quite a few times today, Ger came when I think it was Lee Keegan was stripped of the ball over on the far side when himself and Alan Dillon were involved in a combined movement. When you turn over the ball to Donegal, they'll murder you on the counter-attack. That certainly, I think, is a free up, even though I think Colin Anthony made the most of it. Well, they certainly do punish any unforced passing errors, as you say, and uh, they break so quickly as well. And now, from all of that, it's Michael Murphy, composed, enjoying his afternoon at Croke Park. Why wouldn't he? He's had a storming match. And now, having scored a goal and two from this angle, he's able to put it over, almost at his ease, if that's possible in an all Ireland final. And now he's got a goal and three. On comes Jason Gibbons, who's playing some great football in club football for uh, his club in Mayo. On he comes now, plays for Ballantubber, of course, as well, which is uh, James Horan's club. Can he exert a big influence? Mike, Michael Conroy will be disappointed coming off. They need a goal, I would imagine, Mayo. Very much so. What's interesting in that, actually, the put Aidan O'Shea into forward and put, Tom, uh, put Jason Gibbons in his place in the middle of the field. So now with a big target man in there, they've got to give the ball into him. So it's uh, Killian O'Connor is the provider in towards Aidan O'Shea. That's well read by Neil McGee once again. And it's got to be a free out. Aidan O'Shea comes in, but in fact it was Eamon, his brother, who went in to assist Neil McGee got there before Aidan O'Shea dragged him down. Just one little thing, Ger. In the first half, they were kicking the ball quickly, limiting their solo run. I think they're taking a little bit too much out of the ball this time with the wind behind them. And it is uh, Danny Gall who are being at their most productive. And it's Anthony Thompson. Plays it off here to Carol Lacey. Back to McGrath. Defenders up there in the attack. It's interesting when you look at the scores that the Donegal team that won 20 years ago got, the scores that this team has got in roughly the same number of matches is almost identical. And they're coming again and they're looking so menacing. And that was McElhenney kicking with difficulty because there were Mayo backs almost hanging out of him. And the end result of that is the ball has gone wide and it's got to be a kick out to Mayo. But the time ticking down, as you can see, only 10 minutes now remaining and the gap is five points. Richie Feeney is coming in to play his part. He got a point in the semi-final win over Dublin. He's coming on for end of Varley. So wearing number 19, in comes Richie Feeney. Yes, I think Richie will go into the half-forward line and into the full-forward line, and once more will go Killian O'Connor. So you have Killian O'Connor, Alan Freeman and Aidan O'Shea in the male full-forward line at the moment. It's a mad scramble at this stage in the middle of the park to try and get possession. Racing for it here is Colin McFadden, the 29-year-old player who had thought about giving up football was pers persuaded by his brother-in-law to come back. His brother-in-law, of course, is Jim McGuinness. Back it comes here once again to Rory Kavanagh. Dangerous ball in! Could have gone anywhere, it's uh, gone over the bar. And it's Michael Murphy once again, goal and four now for him. Well, he came in there fearless.